Welcome, citizens, to Liberty Tales from the Tower. As your media director, it is my privilege to inform you that the following stories may contain content some listeners will certainly find disturbing. Tonight's tale brings our minds and mysteries excursion to its conclusion. Now, before our conclusion, a quick message from this episode's sponsors. Hmm? The children of Atreus belong in the Decima Acceleration Academies. Collect up your children and place them outside your doors. Education enforcers will come to enroll your children. Bid your children farewell. Focus on the future of Atreus. Oh, one moment, Aurelia. It, uh, it is our producer. He wants... Uh, mm, we should get to the episode? Collect up your children. Do not interfere with the education enforcers. Are you feeling well? <clears throat> well, uh, we now continue with part four of the four-part series by our own in-tower archivist, K.A. Stats. So, tonight we gather one last time around the table and roll into the tale of minds and mysteries. Day four. Hi. Hey. Morning. Did anyone make caffeine? No. The smell made us all feel a bit sick. Yeah, it made sense. Did anyone else not sleep? What is this sleep you speak of? Uh, off and on. Mostly off. Upsetting dreams, I would have said. But I would have to have slept to have dreamed. Yeah. Same here. Still no intranet, so we can't check in on the lockdown reports. Everyone is awake. It's the last day of lockdown. We only need to make it a few more hours. We can do that, right? We might be hungry, but we can last a few more hours. It takes a few days of no meal to die of starvation, Hill. That is not what I meant. So you hear it too? Even with my hood off, it's in the apartment. We're just tired and hungry. Lockdown will end soon and then we can relax. I just want to see Rufus. Right. Well, I vote that we just play and get through the module, which should fill the time until lockdown ends. I'm not sure that's the best idea. What is that? The breathing. I swear last night I heard voices. And I know it wasn't any of you. They sounded... Fringer. You heard it too. What did you hear? Breathing and talking that was always muffled, like it was in another room. Maybe Fringer's hacked the internet during the lockdown and everyone's hearing this stuff. That is actually more hopeful and naive than what I've been thinking. Maybe we could just sleep through it. We could put on some loud but calming music and try to rest. We just bested those fringers in the caves, though. I'm still really excited about getting to play, if we can. Does the table still work? It certainly does. I will only play if Hilaria thinks we should. Hilaria? Why? What's going on? I think we need to play. See, that is what I was saying. Okay. Everyone, please go to the table and set up. I want to talk to Hilaria for a moment. Why are we playing? Every time we do, something happens. Listen to me. Our team is stuck in those caves until we find those schematics or data or whatever. Stuck. Oh. So you think... Shit. We should start playing. Max, do everything right. Cheating may only make this worse. But it's going to get worse. The team is approaching the final sections. It's all in the program, so I can't manipulate the rules anyway. I envy the cot Rufus gets at the hospital at this point. <sighs> now we begin the distraction. But Max, we do request that we lay off the creepier aspects, if you can, since the lights are still out and all. 
I, uh, I can certainly try. <laughs> so. After escaping the gas room trap, the team had defeated a group of three fringers who had been previously blocking the main path through the cavern. You know from their loud previous conversation that they were waiting on the arrival of other fringers. What do you plan to do now? We need to move quickly and with some measure of stealth to make it through the cavern. I think Officer Nona would draw her firearm now that we are free of the smaller tunnel, and she would like to prepare an action. Reeve, Hilaria is stepping it up today. Okay. Linus picks up the shock baton from the fallen Fringer, since it is an upgrade from his current weapon, and it appears he might need it. I can use stealth to quickly scout ahead. As long as I stay within range of the privacy hood short distance communication capabilities, it will be faster to send out a scout than to have us all moving together at a slower stealth pace. Agreed. Even with the Fringers dead, it is only a matter of time until the boss or someone comes looking for them and finds them missing. We need to hurry. Give me a roll and tell me what you want to do. Avio leaves the smaller tunnel and proceeds to the area the Fringers had been guarding previously. She scouts the way ahead while sending quiet digital pings back to Dr. Fall. If Avio does not get a ping back from the team, she will backtrack. I am happy to ping you back. We can keep you in range. Using a quickly thought up but efficient system of communication, the team is able to progress through many caverns and connected tunnels in under an hour. Wherever the boss or other fringers from the cavern had gone, it was not in the direction Avio and the team selected. But have I been able to follow the right trail? Give me the roll. Specialist Woolrith is still following the trail of footsteps from before. It is clear to her that there are other footsteps heading into different tunnels in the cavern, but this one particular bootprint is still her primary focus. So we just avoided some possible exploration, maybe some loot? but we were able to get away without encountering the other Fringers. <gasps> I consider this a fair trade, as my character is happy to avoid further combat. So, after doing this for an hour, and slowly progressing through the caves, what's next? Still scouting for the group, Specialist Woolrith's night vision setting picks up a bright point of light in the distance. I shut off the night vision to look again. Switching off the setting for a moment, she can see a light in the distance, shining in through a side tunnel. Wherever it leads, it appears to have power. All the way down here. That has to be the way to Dr. Moran's old lab. And Seneca. And the plans. And a way out of this mess. I call the team forward yet again and show them the light. Can I still see the footprints or indicators of others? Yes. Traps, we are so close now and the light is so enticing, but we need to be thinking about traps again. Hmm, agreed. So, we use our perception or investigation? Perception. Everyone roll. While Dr. Fall is too immersed in creating a map of their path back out of the cave, they narrowly miss stepping on a trap as Blandis yanks the distracted hacker to the side. Beneath Dr. Fall's foot, or where a foot would have been, was yet another pressure plate, this time attached to some kind of opening in the wall. Thanks. Apparently, I'm not currently excelling at multitasking. My pleasure. I like you better not dead. Should we investigate the trap? Not worth the time. We should continue on to the lighted tunnel. Huh? A light? The bathroom lights just came back on. Well, try the others. Still not working. Max, if we reach the lab... We may get the lights back. Are you kidding? The game's override may have been in effect this whole time? So if we just played through last night and got through the tunnel, we could have had lights? Quite possibly. <clears throat> well, that's a stupid coding error we should report. Ugh, once the internet's back. We need to get to the lights first. Specialist Woolroth, stay up here with me and we can progress safely and quickly through the tunnel. Of course. Okay. We continue to the entrance of the lit tunnel. As you come around the corner and look down the side tunnel, your night vision is no longer useful. Beyond, the great vaulting caves are strung with small lights. Large metal poles, standing two stories tall, are topped with further lights, illuminating the spaces closer to the center of a massive chamber. 
As the light hits your eyes, you feel the wave of hunger wash over you again. With no meal left to eat and hours on your feet, the team must make another set of endurance checks. Again? We were not prepared for this. I had thought a beginner module would be a lot more forgiving than this. Just be sure to use any special items or abilities you may have. This isn't the time to fail. Shit. Oh, and I used up my bonus on the last check. Does anyone have a reroll? No. Not for this. A wave of nausea rushes over Dr. Fall. This has been too much to handle. Hours of walking, worrying through the tunnels, fighting off fringers, avoiding traps. The darkness pushes in, and Dr. Fall feels that the suffering cannot be put off forever. Scrap. Cece? I... Are you okay? Just needs some water. Cece. <laughs> it's getting so much worse. I really think we should stop. We'll never get out of here if we stop now. We don't know that. Here, water, drink. How are you feeling? I'll be fine. I I just got so hungry since last night. I, I've, I've been feeling a bit sick lately. It, it just got worse so quickly. Do you want to go back to the table? Lay down. The table's fine. It feels a lot better after throwing up. At least you made it to the sink. Really and truly appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> How is everyone feeling about the game? Are we getting near the end? We all feel how weird this is, right? Yes. Hilaria and I have been trying to figure it out. Wait, what? The missing meal, the lights, the voices, your hand, Hilaria's head, my, uh, well. What? Oh. Wait, do you all really think this? Because if this was the kind of thing that I thought on my own, most of you would just laugh at it. I think it. Max does, too. I had some off feelings since the lights went out. I could explain most of it away with coincidence and fearful thinking, but I can't find a solution that fits the missing meal. Your hand, Hilaria's head, Cece vomiting, sure, circumstantial or accidental, but the, the meal is different. We all brought some we had all seen. We knew it was here until it was gone. Why? Because we paid off that guard. So we stopped playing. We can just do something else. I have a few games downloaded on my hood I can share. Or we can just study. Hilaria and I think, at this point, that we need to beat the module to leave. No, the gas is most likely gone. Lockdown is just a formality at this point, right? So we could just leave. Open the door! Uh, wait, how? We can't even leave? We're stuck in the cave in the game, so we're stuck in here until we get out. So we just leave, walk our characters all the way back to the city, turn in our resignation, retire to quiet lives as cafe workers. I don't think that will work. And I think we're too short on time to give it a try. We're already nearing the end. We should finish it. Today. But you sound unsure. Max? It gets dangerous. You are nearing the end, so there will be, you know... Conflict. Fringers. Dangerous things. We will work through them. Most of us are not built for conflict. We can think our way through. It's only a low-level module. Officer Nona has seen the increasing value in the stealthy approach. So, Max, what do we see now? Dr. Fall, having failed the endurance check now takes a penalty to all strength and constitution-related checks. Those were not my strengths to start with, so I'll avoid them anyways. The team continues- We're being sneaky. We can roll for it if we need to, but we're moving at a slower, more discreet pace. Are you leading the group? Yes. Yes. Then give me your stealth roll. Oh, that is still rather high, even with the lower rolls. To help- uh, calm everyone a bit. For a low-level module, you're doing well. None of you even took damage during the fight with the Fringers. So, 
Specialist Woolrith leads the team through the massive cavern as quietly as she is able, though it becomes increasingly difficult to stay hidden in the growing lights of the cave. Lights! Glorious light! Lights are an improvement, but I want to get out of here. Keep going, Max. Woolrith pulls you all to a quick stop as you come around a large boulder. Ahead, your destination is revealed. Standing three stories tall above the cavern floor and sinking even deeper below it stands a massive drill. The drill itself, an inverted spire of hulking metal, dives down into a twisted crevasse down which no end is visible. Atop the drill, the windows of a three-story operating space glow. Slivers of shadow move through the windows. That drill is immense. Is that a real thing? Is that a mining drill we have in Atreus? Actually, I'm not sure. In-game, I roll for history to try and remember something this monumental. Dr. Fall is able to recall that during the first century of Atreus' founding, there was a significant mining event during which a massive drill previously used to tap water reservoirs was lost after hitting a gas pocket in the subterranean caverns and plummeted down outside of recoverable space. Nona looks up. Above the drill is a dark fissure stretching into the darkness above. If there had ever been a tunnel through that rock, Rockfall must have closed it in centuries ago. Wow. There were shadows moving around in the building atop the drill, so there might be other people here as well. We need to be cautious. Always. Standing before the colossal structure, near a makeshift ramp of rock and metal, leading to the offices atop the drill, is a group of fringers. You can see about seven of them, talking and taking aim at empty meal tins with small slingshots. On the ramp, wearing full Atrian armor with no distinguishing marks, stand two guards, armed with sizable firearms. Well, wonderful. This is most likely the protective detail for the interested party. The Frengers here to conduct the purchase must already be inside. <sighs> Any ideas? Either a distraction, or we find another way in. But we can't go through that many people. Agreed. I have a short-distance explosive. Should I set it up here so we can blow it later as a distraction if needed? How many do you have? Uh, two. Sure. Set one up here. Make sure it stays well hidden. Officer Nona sets up one of her two short-range remote explosives in a crack of rock. I put a little extra rock in the way to block the item from view. Now, based on the 3D visualizations for the area, it looks like we can head around the left side of the drill to where it leans slightly close to the wall. We may be able to climb from there and avoid going anywhere near the ramp. We're right behind you. A cave specialist would have been a great character for this game. So, can we stay to the backside of this ridge of rocks until we make it over to the left side? Over here? It is possible to walk down that side. We continue to move slow and stealthy. I can scout ahead. In fact, I do. And I'm choosing to roll for stealth again. Better than last time. With Specialist Woolrith scouting ahead and moving the team forward cautiously, you're brought to an abrupt halt. Ahead of Specialist Woolrith is a singular Fringer. She has not spotted you, but she is facing your direction. She has a chemical stick dangling from her mouth and a small firearm on a belt slung about her hips. Are we going to have to get by her? We can't let her shoot off that firearm. I have an idea. Does Officer Nona look anything like those guards on the ramp from earlier? Except for the division marks on your armor, you're wearing the same, if not very similar, generic Atrian armor. I can work with generic. I pull the patches off. With the pop of several nylon strings, the patches are ripped from your shoulders and one from your chest. Great. Now, Avio, when I walk over there, I'll pretend to be the guard and draw her attention in the other direction. Once she turns her back, you need to rush up and garrote her like you did that other Fringer. We need to be quiet about this, so just get it done quick. I can do that. Now I go out, confident and stoic, and walk up to the Fringer as though to pass her by. I said I'll be back in a min, after a puff. I walk past and ignore her for now. Does she turn to look at me? The Fringer turns, following Officer Nona with her head. 
It's just me. If Lyft wandered off again, it ain't this way he went. As she turns away, once the Fringer is unable to see the rock I'm behind, I rush out, tossing the wire around her neck. Roll for the attack. Specialist Woolrith is able to get the wire around the Fringer's neck, but is unable to inflict enough damage to kill. As the fight begins, the Fringer reaches for her firearm. Are we in a surprise round? Can I go? Yes. Officer Nona rushes up to the Fringer and grabs her head with one hand, pulling her forward into the wire. The other hand holds the firearm at the Fringer's hip. This is not technically an attack, but maybe something like a strength check. Archon, Gloria, that is brutal. Please work. Officer Nona, understanding the dire action required to keep their team undetected, grasps the Fringer by her short brown hair and pulls. She feels a pop, and Specialist Woolrith feels it as well, as the wire slices deep. The Fringer stops struggling, and soon her body is limp, as a steady trickle of blood pushes forth from the horizontal wound across her throat. We lower the body. No! I pick the body up and find a place to hide it. Someone should clean up the blood. Remove any trace we were here. I can do that. Linus kicks around some dry dirt, covering the blood drops and streams. <sighs> that was a risky plan. But it worked, and we need to continue. Quickly. We continue to the section where the drill is closest to the left-hand wall. What does it look like? On this side of the hulking structure, the windows to the rooms are all broken out, and one section of the wall is caved in. The windows have been covered over with tarps or metal sheeting, but some still appear passable. The exterior walkway that surrounds the first and third levels wraps around to the back. The path only breaks in the section where the massive drill had struck the wall centuries ago, crushing the walkway. From inside the windows, lights still shine. How far is the drill structure from the Rockridge Run? About a meter and a half. Between you and the structure drops the dark ravine, the unseen floor somewhere deep below. Comforting. Accurate. I have about 15 meters of rolled steel wire used for scaling buildings. I definitely tie the wire around a strong stalagmite of rock using sleight of hand. With that in place, I look at the jump. This is what Specialist Woolworth does. If I can get over there, I can anchor it off. Then we can cross. Albina. Are you okay? I am the only one here who should do this. But I really don't want to do this. What if I fail? So what? Blandis gets stabbed in the hand when hit with the trap, but what happens if I fall down some endless pit? What? I'm not sure. If you don't want to do this, we can think of another way. You can always find another way. It's one of the great things about this game. This twisted, terrorizing game. That's not helping, Hilaria. So, we can figure something else out. Avio dashes for the crevasse and leaps to the exterior walkway. I use my balance check to land on the edge of the walkway within the 2.5 meter range for standard agile character jump. Argon! I thought we were going to think through this. This is what I am built for. Roll. Oh, oh thank the Archon. Oh, I feel sick to my stomach. That was so risky, Albina! It was a high roll, but we haven't heard from Max yet. Specialist Woolrith. The wheel of wire whipping behind her leaps over the dark abyss below and balances long enough on the edge of the exterior walkway to latch herself to the guardrail. She has made it to the drill. I might be sick. Go to the sink, then. We need to be more careful than that. My jumping was a far safer option than trying to distract or fight off a pack of fringers and guards. And I was tied off. I wouldn't have fallen. No. Wouldn't have fallen. Sure, you may not have fallen, but what about smashing your head on a rock? Breaking your arm on the wire? A whole range of terrible things could have happened! True for the other option, too. At least this way, it was just me. Now, we have a way over. I will attach the line and we can get this done with. At this point, no one knows we're here yet. Are you okay to continue, Blandus? Yes. Just nerves. I tie off the wire, creating a secure crossing for the team. I think with an improvised wire or rope crossing, it's all athletics or balance checks to cross. That is still going to be difficult for me. You and Linus cross first. I will follow up the end. And be quiet about it. All right. Like I said, 
Either give me an athletics or balance check to cross. You are all so lucky this is a low-level campaign. Dr. Fall attaches a line and crosses, followed afterwards by Linus, and finally by Officer Nona. The exterior walkway creaks under the full weight of the team, but doesn't shift. Nearest you are the broken and tarped windows. Ahead is a door, though it is damaged and partially crushed, making it impassable. The tarp. Uh, can I just cut a hole in it? Not a big hole, just small enough to take a peek inside? It's possible. I do that. I have a small utility tool, so I cut a small hole to look into the room. Inside, through the small hole, Linus is able to see an open kitchen and dining space, with long tables and spaced benches. There are two doors to the room, one directly across from the window you're looking through, and the other at the far end of the hall, near a food service station. No food appears to have been in this hall for quite some time. Anything not bolted to the floor has shifted over time, sliding along the angle of the tilted drill platform and bunching up against the window wall. We can enter here. This room hasn't been used for a while. Once we get in there, we don't know where to go. If there were fringers and guards outside, we should also expect fringers and guards inside. Going through the window will make less noise than a door. I cut a flap large enough to push out of the way and crawl through. (sighs) Dr. Fall follows. Me next. And I'm last. With a small piece of tape, I affix the flap back to the rest of the tarp so it's not easily noticeable that the tarp was cut. And I check for traps. Dr. Fall can see that each door is armed with a motion-activated trap near the floor. It appears to be an older model that relies on the disruption of light transmission. Smart thinking. We can just step over them, as long as we remember to do the same on the way back. Disarming them would take time we don't have. Every moment we're in here, we risk being spotted. Follow me, and I make a stealth roll. I actually need stealth rolls from the whole party. (sighs) It should just be an average, so we just need to roll well enough. One low roll shouldn't kill us. What does that all mean? Those are a lot of mediocre numbers. Not low, but certainly not high. I rolled well, but my bonus is non-existent. The average is still above the requirement. The team is technically moving very discreetly. Which door and which direction? The door to the left, I would think. And we head left as well, up the hall. While avoiding the trap on the door. Moving over the trap's range with ease, the team moves into the hall. The hall ends in a closeted door and a right turn. There are several inactive panels of smart glass affixed to the walls. I touch a smart glass to see if it still has any charge. It appears powerless, having gone uncharged for some time. The model of glass is so antiquated, it has a charging port for an input charger you've never seen before. At least... Not in person. If I look down the hall, does it appear to end in another right-hand turn? Yes, with several doors on the left and one door on the right. So it may be shaped like a square hallway with one or a few central rooms and other rooms all around. Where would you keep the most precious information you have? There are three levels to this structure, so I would think to keep it in the middle room of the middle floor. Unless there was some kind of secure room. It certainly looks like Seneca took no time to care for this place in the last year. Honestly, if Dr. Moran were working with Fringers and they found out he was gone, they most likely looted the place. Knowing the very little I know about the doctor, he never would have worked in a place like this. Not in this state. We need to find the elevator or a stairwell. We can check the second level's center first. Max, what does this area we're in look like again? The hall ends in a closed door and turns right. The walls are covered in defunct smart glass. I walk up and check the door for traps. You detect no traps. Then I open the door slowly and investigate what's inside. Linus slowly pushes open the door. It swings inward and uses no power, a common type of door for emergency exits in mines. Inside is a staircase. Congratulations to Sneaky Linus for locating the stairs. 
I was so worried you would skip this door in search of the stairs, and it would be the literal last place you all looked. Well, we found it, so everyone get behind me and we'll proceed up. Sure, but what are we looking for, really? We know they removed the only copy of the data on an external drive, but that could be anything. It could be tiny. If they have it in the local system, I can find it. I just need to get to an access point, like a linked smart glass or hollow desk. As the team moves up the stairs, you spot the shadow of a large person on the second floor landing. From behind, it appears to be a guard in generic but modern atrium gear, similar to those you had seen outside. I will get rid of them. Are you sure? I could try the grout again. If it's anything like the armor rating I have, it won't be as effective as a grapple. All right. What's the plan? Does the stairwell have a window? A broken window, just under two meters wide, covered with a tarp on one half and a metal sheet on the other. Cut the sheet as quietly as you can while I sneak up. If I can grapple the guard and disable them, we can toss the body out the window. Well, sure. This is a more serious side I didn't know Hilaria had. Very adept at murder. It's a game. But it's not a game. You get the guard, I'll be there to help. Linus and Dr. Falk can prep the window. Special grapple with sneak attack bonuses. And assistance. I'll try to keep the guard quiet. This is complicated. I'll need sleight of hand rolls from Linus and Dr. Fall. Give me a moment. With the slimmest of margins, Officer Nona sneaks up behind the guard, who you now notice has been finishing off the last of a meal canister. In a swift grapple, Nona grabs the guard from behind, wrapping around their knees and dragging them down the stairs. Specialist Woolworth knows how loud struggling people can be, so she shoves a piece of nylon cloth into the guard's mouth. <clears throat> Linus and Dr. Fall just finish cutting a slice out of the window's top as Officer Nona hoists the body up and launches the guard out the window. There's a small, slight metallic click where their belt taps the walkway and a low, almost inaudible thud some long seconds later as the body hits a jutting rock within the fissure. The guard is gone. Combat, in whatever form that was, has concluded. No time to wait around. I check the door to the second floor for traps. Specialist Woolworth spots a small piece of equipment attached to the top of the door. It doesn't appear to be a trap, but perhaps some kind of sensor. I approach and investigate. A recognizable proximity motion sensor. This is newer technology, certainly brought down here within the last few months. It detects motion and registers if the person or object making said motion is permissible in the area. Can I attempt to add our data to the program? We wouldn't want that though. We want it to be like we were never here, not like we were allowed to be here. True. Okay, uh... Can I create a gap in the system, allowing us to pass undetected? Use technology roll? Give me the roll. <laughs> See, this is what Dr. Fall is built for. I fight with tools, not fists. So, can I deactivate it without detection and let us pass? I, I, I need a moment. Sorry. Sorry. Are you okay? I... I feel so tense, like... Like I want to sprint, or, or dive, or hide, all of it. Do, do you know the odds? Don't tell me the odds. Sit down. Deep breaths. Is this from the game? I'm not sure. His character is not built for combat. What is even happening? This isn't possible. You all understand that, right? I understand. But we need to continue if we want to get out of here. That makes no sense. None. The door is just broken or the lockdown override didn't work. I... I need a minute. Landis? He went into the bathroom. I think he just needs some time. Can we play without him? I'm not sure. Should I explain the area you're entering? Hmm. Linus as a character doesn't do much in these stealthier combative situations, so I think we can move on for now. If we encounter an area where we need him, we can stop. 
Does he need to be around for anything in particular? If you enter combat that requires everyone to roll for order, then yes. Or a skills challenge. All the characters would be required then. Or if he needs to do anything that requires a check, like crossing the wire across the crevasse. Should one of us go and check on him? I will in a few minutes. Give him some time to catch his breath. Right. So, moving on. Dr. Fall, a talent of the generation, connects to the wireless signals used to control the sensor and temporarily sets it to skip, allowing the team to pass without incident. Inside the door is a similar hallway to the level below. Before you is a hallway with two doors on the right exterior wall and one door on the left interior wall. There is also a hall to your left with a door at the end, one door on the exterior wall, several inoperable smart glass panels, and one air vent on the interior wall. Ahead of you, sticking out of the interior door frame, you can just make out the tip of large boots. A guard. We think that the data must be in here, so... Is the vent large enough to fit the tiny Avia Woolroth? You believe so. We move quietly around the corner, so the guard is no longer within line of sight. Wait! I scan the area for cameras. And you find them. Even with passive perception, the cameras are noticeable. Odds are you have been caught on camera, but no one seems to have noticed yet. Rave! We have to hurry. Using sleight of hand, I quietly remove the vent grate and crawl in. I think Dr. Fall should come with me, and Officer Nona and Linus can stand guard out here. If we're lucky and fast, we can get the data and leave quickly. We are not lucky. Really, though? You are. The odds of all your plans working out in your favor was lower than the dice outcomes you've rolled. That's rather lucky. I guess. I roll sleight of hand. And I follow. I'll start scanning for open access points. Computer use for my privacy. Specialist Woolrith, in a practice maneuver, silently and quickly removes the grating and crawls inside, ushering Dr. Fall behind her. Dr. Fall is unable to locate any open access points, but continues to scan for anything that could lead to the information. All the open points are for advanced technologies, like the newer sensors, and were only recently installed. Unlike those newer scanners, the cameras appear to be an older, wired model. The older technology may be less efficient, but it has the benefit of being more difficult to access due to the lack of interconnectivity. When we get in there, we may need to physically look for the data. Odd as that sounds, it may just be on a drive. Like a data paper. Standalone and small. Will that much data fit into one data sheet? I still think we're looking for a drive. When you reach the other end of the vent tunnel, only a meter or so, you see the room beyond. No one appears to be in the room, but it's difficult to tell from your position near the floor. There is a solid counter island in front of you, and you can see an array of small equipment. I remove the grating and move out, but staying low and moving right. You're able to remove the grating without much noise and move to the right. You can tell you're in a smaller lab-like room. There is a glass door at the other end of the room, and through the door, you can see a man unlike the guards or fringers. He appears to be speaking with a tall fringer, a woman with a high plume of white hair. The deal is going down. You need to hurry. Help me look, Cece. I use a perception check and a stealth check to search the room quietly. Same. Sorry, I needed to clear my head. No need to apologize. Can we do anything to help? We need to win. Sounds about right. So, Dr. Fall and Specialist Woolrith are able to determine three things of note. The room is filled with older equipment used to prepare mining and soil samples. The glass door to the room is locked, and in the corner next to the door, under the counter, is a locked sample cooler. It no longer appears to be cooling, but it still makes a formidable lock. What kind of lock? Is this a sleight-of-hand situation or computer use? Based on your roles, you think this would be use technology or sleight-of-hand but not a computer check, as it won't interface with your privacy hood. First, I check for traps. There is a trap on the door to the room, but not on the cooler. 
Then I go ahead with the use technology check to get this open. Is that a joke? While not a critical failure, the attempt fails nonetheless, as Dr. Fall has never worked with technology of this nature, this ancient. I roll for sleight of hand. We have no time to wait. As soon as Dr. Fall backs away, I go in and get the work done. Hopefully. (sighs) By a single point, Specialist Woolrith succeeds. The cooler pops open, and as it does, a signal reaches Dr. Fall's privacy hood. The cooler had blocked the access point for the data drive, but now its signal is recognizable. Computer use, quickly. Is this the data? So much better. Skilled and adept, Dr. Fall deftly accesses the drive through their privacy hood's interface. Dr. Fall identifies a myriad of files showing both schematics and engineering data. The marks of the division and department appear accurate, and you do believe that this is what you have been after. We could just sneak out of here. They'll never know. I hand the drive to a VO. She is less likely to drop it than me. True. As the drive leaves the protective walls of the cooler, you hear beeps. Not a trap, but a signal. Shit. They must be scanning for the signal, just like you were. I dive back into the vent, pulling Dr. Fall behind me. Once on the other side, you meet up with Officer Nona and Specialist Bauer. And the skills challenge begins. This is a difficult skills challenge to escape the drill and its cavern. Everyone rolls. As the team meets up, the beeping becomes an alarm. The data being exposed has triggered some kind of warning system. Ahead of you is the door to the stairs. You can already hear voices and heavy boots as people begin to investigate. First, Linus. So, my best option is to start small. Perception. Where are the guards and fringers? What is our best route forward? Success! Linus glances around the corner and listens to each footfall. The guards are in the central room, where the deal had been going down, but nothing is stopping them from coming out into the hall. Through the vent, you can hear that some of them have moved into the lab room. They may soon see the fallen grate, if they haven't already. Head to the stairs. We'll get out the way we got in. Hurry. Albina? I need to save the stronger abilities, so I want to use athletics to start the sprint through the door and down the stairs. If I can get ahead, we can see if the way is viable. Failure. Specialist Woolrith begins her quick exit, but in a moment of fault, she overestimates the weight of the door and throws herself through the threshold with unneeded force. As her turn comes to an end, Specialist Woolrith is midair, cascading toward the bottom of a flight of stairs. (sighs) Hilaria? I run to the bottom of the stairs and use a strength check to catch Specialist Woolroth. Success! Officer Nona is able to catch the flying Specialist Woolroth. Once caught, they're both on the landing between the first and second floors. Right behind them is Linus, with Dr. Fall at the top of the stairs. You can all hear yelling as a fringer rounds the end of the hallway, catching sight of you in the stairwell. Cece? Do the doors have locks? Older electric locks, but it looks like they don't have power. In a desperate act, I use weapons terror to charge the lock with my shock baton? I will allow it. It just seems fun. Failure. The shock baton makes contact with the door, but does nothing more than blacken a small section of the old metal lock. The Fringer has now drawn their weapon, and more have noticed Dr. Fall. Run. Faster. Blandis? Can I make it to the first floor before taking my move? Sure. The door is closed to the first floor, as it had been when you found it. Through the small plastic window, you see two guards. They're ahead of us and behind us. (sighs) I'm really best at charisma, so let's give Deception a shot. Success. What are you doing? I burst open the door and yelled at them. There! You two! Go around and head them off. And I take a breather like I just chased someone down the stairs. Yes, sir! The two guards, a bit bewildered, head away from you and down the opposite hall, searching for the mysterious intruder. Careful now. Your team's successes and failures are really close. Albina? Seeing the guards leave, I head for the kitchen we entered through, being careful not to trip the sensor. I jump onto the wire and use balance to make my way across quickly. Success! By a slim margin. 
Specialist Woolrith, with speed and the kind of balance only ever seen at an acrobatics competition, leaps atop the wire spanning the crevice and walks across. She wobbles, but never slips, and awaits the team on the far side. Two fringers are already on approach to the large cave and headed toward you. Hilaria? I am having a hard time coming up with something... But, while still within the drill building, I use my firearm attack to try and halt one, if not both, of the fringers approaching a VO from the cave. Failure. The shots go wide through the cave. Due to the model of the firearm, the shots are not too loud, and the bullets do little to deter the oncoming fringers. Cece. Alright, I have a smoke grenade, since fighting is not really my specialty. But I want to toss the grenade on the other side of a VO, so the fringers can't get a direct view of our actions. Afterwards, I would like to cross the wire. I think dexterity is the only option here. Failure. Please, people, roll to your strengths! I have no applicable strengths here. Same. Linus was built for inner city espionage, not splunking. Okay. So... Dr. Fall tosses the gas grenade, but it strikes the wall and rolls back into the crevasse, the plume of smoke disappearing into the dark below. While trying to connect to the wire, your ring snaps, leaving you dangling above the dark. The fringers begin to fire. A bullet rushes by, poorly aimed. Well, shit. You're tied for successes and failures. Landis, it's your turn. Check your skills. Archon, thank you. I use my inspiring talent to skip my place in the turn order and give a d6 bonus to the next player. Albina. Within the rules, and so lucky. I can't use balance again, but I can use straight dexterity, trained and with your added bonus. Avia backtracks and swings down on the wire. If it were Officer Nona, Avio would have been more cautious, but as Dr. Falls and Avio's combined weight are about the same as Nona, I feel confident both of us could be on the wire at the same time. I swing down on my legs and help to reattach Dr. Fall with the spare ring from the extra mining kit we brought with us. Dexterity. Five. That's... five. Success! The challenge is completed, and you have successfully escaped the structure. But not the caves. Not the caves. And they know we are here. Yes. So where does the end of the skill challenge leave us? Oh, it is a pre-generated story section, so... As the team escapes the drill structure, they reach the tunnel through which they entered, while guards and fringers flood down the ramp in pursuit. Before them stretches the dark of the caves beyond, but behind you... The yells of approaching fringers and traitorous atriums fill the hall. This is not the time to breathe or dally, as you are still far from home. So we are past this section here? Yes. You're right here. I toss my second explosive and blow the tunnel entrance as we flee into the dark. With any luck, they'll not be able to follow. Awesome. I have forgotten about that. Give me two demolitions use checks, one for each charge and send over the data on the explosives you used. In a rain of dust and chaos, the explosives blow. As you dash off into the darkness, you feel the disorientation of exhaustion and confusion washing over you, pounding in your ears as the sound pushes through the small spaces of the tunnel. It would have been a difficult return, if not for the specific note that Dr. Fall made about recording a map and a possible way out. With the use of the map, we can skip the return maze and bring the party back to the mines with ease. Is everyone in agreement? Yes, please. Harkon, yes. Thank you. I knew making a map was a smart idea. As long as it's within the module to allow it, then yes, get us out of here. It is allowed. (sighs) How far can we get? The team reaches the mines, passing through the trap door that had harmed Linus, and hearing the sweet sound of distant machines. Several beeps ring in your ears as your hoods reconnect to the intranet. It's back! I'm calling Tori and getting this finished. The call connects. Section Director Tori. This is Specialist Woolroth. We have the schematics. We just re-entered the mines. 
Give it to the team. They will meet you in the mines. Well done. May the Archon watch over you. Tori said we need to give the schematics to a team who will... Ahead of you, coming down the slope, is a small group of officers dressed not unlike Officer Nona. Though they are wearing helmets. Do you wear a helmet? No. It came with the starting set, but I decided against it. They scan your marks, and a man of medium height and wearing black lipstick begins to address you. Specialist, officer, doctor, thank you for your work in reclaiming the schematics. The section director has sent us to collect the data. Tori understandably believes you may have reached your limit on this by now. So very, very true. I hand over the data drive and start walking out. Do we get paid? This is our characters' jobs, so yes, but not until their next payday. Right. Is that it? The end. Yes. You're technically back in Atrian territory, and the data is no longer in Seneca's hands. Was that the lock? What time is it? Patience. Having reached the official end of the lockdown, together we have... Just on time. Lockdown is over. Reeve, can we go get something to eat, please? Yes. <laughs> we can go to that place on floor two if it's open already. Oh, I want to call Rufus really quick. Do it on the way down. <laughs> Shouldn't we talk about what happened? Has anyone seen my other shoe? I thought it was... Thank you for playing part one of our newest immersive Minds and Mysteries module. The Return of Dr. Morin. Please level up your characters and prepare for part two of our newest immersive module. Where's the rest of the tower? <laughs> part two? Max? Part two? I... I didn't know. I didn't. Thank you for listening to the Liberty Podcast. If you would like early access to episodes and bonus content, join fellow citizens on our Fool and Scholar Patreon at patreon.com slash fool and scholar. This episode of Tales from the Tower was written by K.A. Stats, co-created and produced with sound design by Travis Vengroff, with dialogue editing and... Uh... uh I'm still on broadcast. Oh? Yes, send the call through. Aurelia, you can leave until your shift. Really, you, you don't need to wait in the studio. Collect up your children. The DAA awaits them. Petrus! Petrus! Uh, we're not taking callers for tonight's program. Petrus, I'm me. Aurelia, get out of there. That can't be me. <laughs> oh, very humorous. Now go get some rest. Seriously, Aurelia, this recording is quality. <laughs> no, Petrus, please listen to me. Get out of there. That's not... Minds and Mysteries stars Frankie Larson, Travis Vengroff, Cole Burkhart, Christy Luce, Jordan Cobb, and Peter Lewis. Minds and Mysteries features additional voices by K.A. Stats, Naomi McMillan, Lindsay Graham, Aethor Vitherson, Ryan Philbrook, Graham Rowett, Lindsay Zana, and Daniel Demerin. The music for this season of Tales from the Tower was written by Brandon Boone, and episodes were mixed by Marissa Ewing of Hemlock Creek Productions. Thank you, Petrus. We'd also like to thank a few special citizens who've helped make the show possible. Specifically, executive producer Dennis Greenhill, and other citizens like Brian Stilwell, John Jessup, Evan Nugent, Swansong, Joel Chavez, Suspense, Jack Ravel, Jeremiah Castillo, Larry Dickerson, Jedi Girl Jillian Jacobo, Jack Grant, Trevor Childers, Ada, Matthew Howard, Jex Artis, Mr. Book, Gabe Amok, Juanito Guzman Medina, Ian McConnell, Daddy Cupcake, Misty Major, James Mahaffey, Matt Schnabel, Sedgwick Lee, Rocket Punk Extraordinaire, Wyatt Denman, Aubrey Deeran, Murray M. Moss, Katinka Van S., Punkin, Mally Hawthorne, Haley, Jason O'Keefe, Jerry Bookhammer, Grumpasaurus, Duck Moo, Marshall Mintz, Brian Hancock, Thomas Vicarian, Daniel Stewart, Marcus Larson, Kathy Deadly Blonde Robertson, and Carol Vengroff. This production is copyrighted 2021 by Fool and Scholar Productions, and Liberty is a trademark of Travis Vengroff. 
Thank you for listening. Hope that the Archon watches over you. Will you come with me, Petrus? Where? Well, no. After tonight, I'm exhausted. Time for me to head to the Sky Rail. You will come with me, Petrus. I will lead you to the Education Enforcers. I am not a child, Aurelia. I, I don't even have children for the DAAs. What? <coughs> Let go of me! You are all children. So small. Children. Archon! Archon!